Hello, welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, I told you about my hands-on experience about this little boy over here, the ThinkPad X220. And my first impressions were very positive. You know, I was happy with my purchase. I thought it was a good deal. But with Windows, and especially with the mechanical hard drive, I felt like it could do a lot more, uh, especially for the boot time and programs loading time. You know, they were a little slow. So I just installed a solid state drive, installed Manjaro Linux, and tweaked the interface a little bit according to my needs and to the capabilities of this small screen. And let's see how it performs now. All right, we are on my desktop now, so we can easily have a quick look to the system. And as I said, I chose Manjaro Linux for this laptop because I actually wanted to build sort of a custom system or at least something designed to run well on this machine and to suit my needs and my personal preference. So the most obvious choice in these situations is usually going with a clean install of Arc. So going from the first console screen to the full desktop environment exactly the way you want. But you know, this also means you'll need to figure out by yourself how to configure uh, and make even the basic stuff work. And I tried Arc, I tried it in the past on a Pentium 4 machine, um, it was like 10 years ago, believe it or not. And I actually was able to get it up and running with Fluxbox. But it was hard, at least for me. And you know, usually desktop computers are also easier to deal with, so I consider that, consider this being a laptop uh, and a tri-dark on this machine too but I lost like one hour to just figure out how to connect to the Wi-Fi in the first place before even starting the actual installation process so I thought it was too time consuming and even maybe over my knowledge and skill set at the moment and Manjaro on the other hand allows you to a certain level of customization but it also has some sensible defaults I mean, it comes with a pre-configured Wi-Fi capability, video, audio drivers, and stuff like that, uh, while maintaining access to most of the ARC resources like the ARC user repository. So, as you can see, I have over here kind of an unusual looking desktop environment, and that's because I'm not actually running a full desktop environment here, uh, you know, like GNOME, KDE, XFCE, etc., but just a window manager, called i3wm and bubble based status uh, over down here uh, is the status bar. Uh, now I can definitely say it takes some time, like a couple of days, to get used to this desktop style, but in the end it is totally worth it. Uh, the system is way easier and faster to use than a traditional desktop environment. In fact, I like this setup so much. Uh, that I'm planning to port it even on my main laptop, which runs Ubuntu GNOME at the moment, together with Windows 10, by the way. Uh, while on this laptop, uh, I only have Manjaro, and Manjaro uh, has a community build that comes with the i3 window manager by default, so this saved me quite a lot of time in building this setup. Now, it is hard to show everything in a short video, but I'll try my best so that you can have an idea uh, of just how it performs and maybe uh, be inspired. I mean, you don't have to have this exact machine to replicate this setup if it suits your needs. It's just that I found this works good with this hardware and especially with this small screen. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, this is screen fetch. Uh, a little piece of software that shows you uh, this set of information and it is running inside my terminal which is the default one that comes with uh, this distribution uh, urxvt and i also have the zsh shell a useful alternative to the default bash shell uh, and i also changed all of its colors i'm actually using the tango color palette here because you know i'm used to it I've been seeing these colors for years, so I easily remember what they mean. For instance, you know, LS shows five folders uh, with different color, and with this color palette, I easily remember which one is a file, a folder, or whatever. Now, as you can see, this terminal window uh, doesn't have any window borders or any title bar, and this is because i3 
uh, is a tiny window manager, and this means that every time you open a new window, it takes a certain space on the screen, uh, and the windows will never overlap on top of each other. With some exceptions, of course, like dialog boxes. You, you'll never want, for instance, a dialog box feeling like half of the screen. So yeah, uh, and also you may have noticed I was able to quickly open a new terminal window with just a key combination, which in my case is mode plus enter, being mode uh, the Windows key by default. And this is another feature of i3 I love so much. Uh, you can map almost everything to a key combination. In fact, as you can see now, these two terminal windows are on this workspace and you can even have as amazing workspace as you want, uh, by the way, and rename them whatever you like. But if I want to move one window to another workspace, I just focus it by just moving mouse pointer over it and press a key combination. Uh, in my case, it's mode shift plus the workspace number I want. And to switch workspaces, you can either use your mouse or press, you guessed it, another key combination, which is by default mode plus workspace number. Uh, and you can set all of these combinations uh, in your i3 config file. Uh, you can even set them to execute a specific command on or launch an applications. Uh, for instance, I have Nautilus and Firefox easily accessible with this method. You can even set a certain application to open on a certain workspace by default, but I don't want that, so I don't, I didn't enable that feature. Uh, if you want, if you want to run uh, all of the other programs you have installed, I mean, uh, you'll need a, a menu, of course. And I chose to keep the uh, default one that comes with this Manjaro build, which is D menu, because I thought it was simple, effective, and easy to customize and I can access it with mode plus T. Uh, here you can type an application command, you can also, but you can also type any command you want, uh, and you can run it. Uh, this, Windows, uh, this window manager also allows you to toggle full screen for a specific window, and also toggle floating mode, which allows you to overlap and resize a, a window, uh, like a traditional window manager, I mean. Uh, and so, if for whatever reason you might want to do that, you have that option. And again, of course, you can set a specific window class or program to go into floating mode by default in the i3 configuration file. I also have all of my volume buttons, including the microphone mute button, uh, which usually doesn't work on Linux. In my case, it works. Uh, and they do what I, they are supposed to do. As you can see, they they also send a custom notification when they actually modify the volume. And again, you can do this because you can set a specific button to run a specific command, or in this case, two commands, one to modify the volume and the other to send the notification. Uh, based, of course, the notification that it sends uh, is based on the notify send command, and so you pass the argument to the notify send command. Uh, on the bottom, I also have Bumblebee status, uh, as I said, as my status bar. Uh, instead of the default i3 bar that came with this Manjaro build, I think it looks way better and also shows a couple of useful informations over here. And I even removed some of the default plugins. And all right, here I have Conkey that again came directly with this Manjaro build. Uh, I just tweaked the configuration file just a little bit. Uh, just to change the colors, the font, uh, but nothing more. Uh, it looks very modern, in my opinion, and elegant. Now, this was just to demonstrate that with some little effort, you can easily create a very fast, responding, and capable environment, even on an older machine like this. And believe it or not, this setup is very efficient, and I really like it for this very reason, because uh, it makes a very efficient use of the available screen space uh, and really makes your workflow much faster. So, I didn't go through all of the key combinations available. It will take like way too much time uh, because you know you can set whatever you want. But if you want to recreate a similar environment, 
I'm going to put my i3 configuration file down in the description, there will be a link. Actually, not exactly the same file, because mine is quite a mess to, to all of the trial and error I went through to make it work the way I wanted. But I rewrote it and reorganized uh, the file, so um, you have all these functions available, and everything will be commented so that it will be easier to read and modify according to your needs. Alright, so what I actually wanted to do with this video was to show both the real capability of the X220 and the potential of a well-made desktop environment. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with this setup and I hope my experience can help someone else planning to switch either laptop, operating system, Linux distribution, desktop environment or whatever in their choices. Also, in the next video, I'm gonna tell you something somewhat scary that happened to me uh, that made me think of a Linux-based solution to help me avoid this happening again, even if the problem wasn't directly related to any software, hardware or any other high-tech stuff. But I don't want to anticipate too much for now, so stay tuned and as soon as I can, I will tell you everything. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for dedicating some of your time to me. And if you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more tech lifestyle related content and I guess to know more about Dimension Story. Ciao!